The first season of any good mystery show is usually great because there are so many unanswered questions that it's basically a playground for the imagination. When it comes to Silo, the playground is a mile wide because there's just so much that we don't know yet and this can make one crazy. But there are some things that we do know, some clues we can use to try to solve this puzzle and that means there's room for speculation. Simply put, it's time to look at some Silo theories. Welcome tinfoilers, today's video is all about the most popular theories related to the biggest question facing fans of the show. What is actually going on outside the silo? But before we head off into this wilderness, a quick reminder, this is spoiler territory. This is your chance to avoid ruin. And that got dark quickly. This is all based solely on the show. I don't wanna know the details until the TV show has run its complete course. As always, I can't miss a chance to say hi to the channel patrons. Much love to the producers of this here Nautilus show. And these are the channel links, Patreon and the free Discord, where you can find other fans of the show that I cover in a very chill space. All right, tinfoilers, let's dive. Sometimes understanding the actions or feelings of others isn't easy, especially when the other person is coming from a vastly different experience than your own. Stepping into the shoes of characters you want to understand takes a conscious effort if you want to see the world from their perspective. So as I was watching Silo for the first time, I kept wondering, why was the power behind the Silo so obsessed with controlling the perception of the outside world in the way that they did? Given the obvious circumstances, I thought it would be an easy sell go outside and die or stay inside and live. So why do they bother with trying to repress history or stamping out the uprising of people who want to leave? Just show them the door. I mean, obviously, I would try to talk them out of it first, but if they're ready to burn down the whole silo, well, you gotta let them leave. Most people only need to see one person drop dead on the screen and the lesson is learned. They won't ask to go outside. Something isn't right here. The only way this makes sense, in my humble opinion, from the perspective of the silo elite, is if there's something outside of the silo that they don't want people to see. This is the reasoning that underlies one of the larger ideas about the show's big mystery, one that I am personally subscribed to, full disclosure and all. One way viewers of the show have chosen to answer that question, the outside world isn't what we think it is. So to explain this, let's start at the beginning. We have to start by talking about the Great Rebellion. The silo suppresses the ownership of relics of the past. Only the powerful are allowed to access them. Some even keep them as decoration, if they're really lucky. It seems to me that controlling knowledge of the past would benefit the silo elite in the same way that it does the ruling class in real life. It allows them to revise or completely change history to their liking, you know, in a way that makes them look good. This is a very powerful tool because it controls what you know and therefore what you can imagine. It could even be used to, I don't know, change the story of the rebellion and make the rebels out to be the bad guys. The story of the rebels is, as they tell it, highly suspect. They claim the rebels tried to leave the silo by force in order to expose the rest of the citizens to the killer atmosphere outside. Oh, and they burned all of the books and all of the history in the process. Right. It's a bit hard to believe, I know, but you only need enough of the population to believe it for it to work. Unfortunately for the silo, curiosity is a natural human trait. And let's be real, history shows that once an idea is spread, it's nearly impossible to stop it by threats of violence. Now, in this specific case, people in the silo are naturally interested in knowing about their past, even if they're equally terrified of being punished for their curiosity. Allison, Holston, George, Lucas, and now Juliet were all punished for being too curious about the past and wanting to know too much about the silo itself. We can really see how their curiosity pushed them to risk their necks, just to hold on to even a small piece of history or a snippet of forbidden knowledge. It comes from their desire to understand their own identity in the greater context. Part of knowing who you are is knowing where you came from, just as the past informs the present. But this rebellion that we heard about in the early episodes was a massive event in silo history, and it must have profoundly reshaped the social dynamics within the silo. It's conceivable that the atmosphere was once more lenient and less authoritarian, but this pivotal moment seems to have diverted their course down a much darker path. As the theory suggests, it's possible that the story of the Great Rebellion didn't play out exactly as we were told. That with time and a little intentional manipulation from the powerful, the details and the meanings of those events were changed to one that was favorable to the silo elite. Those rebels were probably like the Flame Keepers, if they weren't Flame Keepers themselves. They may have discovered the truth about the silo and demanded to go outside, but they were framed as a bunch of lunatics bent on destruction just to keep others from following suit. We're told that for anyone so unfortunate as to be sent outside, it's curtains. If the rebels were demanding to leave, there must be some reason why they thought it was a good idea. And maybe the fact that Juliet survived her cleaning is proof that they were right.
I think this is a reason enough for the silo to change history and mask the truth about those events to prevent anyone else from leaving and discovering the secret. So it might sound a bit crazy to some, but I think the theory that the outside is either a projection or another level of the silo, well, it makes some sense when you consider the possibilities we've discussed so far. Let's examine it from another angle, starting from those special suits that they make the cleaners wear. Cleaning reinforces social controls by making people too scared to step a foot outside the silo, keeping whatever secret out there safe. For those who do get sent out to do a little window washing, that's one less troublemaker in the silo to have to worry about. So to the powerful within the silo, it's a W. As for the tape and the suits, this one had a lot of people confused and rightly so. Many were under the impression that the suit was killing the wearers on purpose, myself included actually. The belief was that the O2 tank was pumping poison mixed in with air. Maybe there was some kind of time release or some sort of substance that mixes with the outside air. I even considered the idea that the poison was being applied by these sprayers in the decontamination chamber. I just thought it was odd that they got sprayed on the way out too. So seeing Juliet survive while wearing the suit with better seals, well that killed the entire branch of theories dead in its tracks. Or you could say it nipped it in the bud. <laughs> but I'm not gonna say that because I don't want you to unsubscribe. <laughs> The tape did save the day for Juliet, thanks to Walker's moment of clarity. She figured out that Bernard knows the suits are designed to kill, and the answer to that was in switching out the crappy tape for the good ones, which did give Jules a shot at surviving. Still, I thought it was clever how they kept us in the dark about how or why exactly nobody survived cleaning until the very final act. But back to the overall theory. If the outside world is fake, or another part of the silo, then Juliet making it to the top of this hill would explain Bernard's odd reaction. Remember when Bernard ran to the secret server room that only opens with the number 18 key? Well, why did he do that? Well, according to this theory, we're not shown exactly what happens in the room, but based on the context, it's probably because he needed to let the other silo bosses know that someone is on the loose. And perhaps they might want to kill their camera feed so that their respective inhabitants don't see this and set off a series of mutinies. Or it could be to make sure that the secret out there is kept safe. We're coming right back to this one, but first I want to talk about one other thing. Early in the season, there's an episode where Juliet is tasked with fixing the giant generator at the base of the silo. This repair has got to be done. It's a now or never situation. A complete failure of the generator means the lights go out. Like for real. Fortunately, Jules comes up with a plan that involves turning off the generator temporarily just to get these repairs done. Outside of a few near-death experiences, everything works out. But there is a moment after the repair when the generator comes back online and we witness something very strange. This got a whole lot of people talking and there's been an equal amount of speculation as to why this happened. I'm going to give you some of the in-world theories and explanations that have resulted from that. Then I'll give you the real story from the production side. Theory goes like this. The video is some kind of default video that plays when the system is reset and perhaps that's what we witnessed or it's a glitch. It could be an indication also that this video was something that was quite normal for silo citizens to see. It may be that this video was used to keep the citizens from seeing the outside world because it was so depressing to have to look at every day. So it was like a wallpaper almost. The video was meant to inspire and give hope to the siloans in the early days for the big schism that caused the leadership to decide to show the apocalyptic wasteland instead. That's one story. Maybe this is when the idea of hope became a problem because it drove a good chunk of people down there to revolt and try to leave. Now this might make leaders decide that any remnants or reminders of the past should be eradicated to prevent anyone else from getting any wise ideas. I love how these theories all seem to work together though. I mean, they just come together like Voltron. Now the real story. So the real story is that this was an error, plain and simple. It got left in the script and now it's canon. So now the writers will have to square this away somehow, which is great because it means that all of the time I spent researching this theory wasn't a complete waste because I discovered this fact at the end. Either way, the one thing I think we can say for sure is that there must have been someone named Jane Carmody who was sent out to clean in the video of what that person saw through their visor, or it was something that was piped into them. Maybe it was the first person who was sent out to clean. Maybe like Allison and Juliet, this person was a troublemaker, maybe even a flame keeper. So many questions around this video, but this split second shot set the aluminum foil stocks through the roof. So let's run it back to the server room one more time. This scene where he's opening the doors occurs right after he leaves the cafeteria because he sees Jules walking over the ridge. Clearly, she's made it too far, as we see him say earlier. She'll be done before she reaches the tree. 
So he was expecting her to croak right about here, but then it didn't happen. This is as far as she was supposed to go before the poison took her out. This didn't happen, so he runs to the server room, and then we see this. So Juliet's image changes after Bernard enters the server room as he's freaking out over the fact that she's not dead. The implication is pretty obvious, right? Bernard's got something to do with this sudden change of scenery. He made the view change back to the bad ending version of reality. So there is a server in the silo that changes how the outside world looks. So let's say this happened. Let's say this is the reasoning and this is why it happened. Bernard turns off the Jane Carmody version of the world in Juliet's helmet. Now she can see the quote unquote real world again. But why would he do this? Wouldn't it serve him better to keep the illusion up, making it harder for her to see what's going on? Or just maybe, and I think you know where I'm going with this, none of what she's seeing is the real world to begin with. It's all just cover to hide the truth from Jules. Yep, it's really starting to look like the answer to the real mystery of the silo is not too far out of reach. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we find out that the city in the distance is just holographic projection. We need dates on season 2 stat. Well, that's a wrap. Silo theories number one. So glad to finally get this series started. The recaps are fun, but the theories are even better. I think we'll touch on this topic in the future because there's more to say about this particular theory. Shout out once again to the patrons, the regulars, the commenters, and of course the Discord gang. Remember to be good to yourself and to others. Be safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.